So I want to talk with you about the prodigal son, but not exactly the prodigal son. I want to use that as a context for understanding the end of Malachi chapter 3. So I've got Branton's English translation of Malachi 3 here. This is the Septuagint. I'm going to read it to you. Then I want to talk with you about it in the context of Jesus. Now you say context, that's future, isn't it? It is, but Jesus is the Word of God. And so when this message is delivered as the testimony of God, it's delivered from the Word of God via the Holy Spirit to Malachi. So Jesus is still the author of both. Let's read it. It says, And they shall be mine, saith the Lord Almighty, in the day which I appoint for a peculiar possession, and I will make choice of them as a man makes choice of his son that serves him. Then shall, they, then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked and between him that serves God and him that serves him not. Now, if you remember the prodigal son, you had two sons. One wanted his inheritance early and left and blew it all on wine and women and song. He ended up sleeping with the pigs. He was penniless. He didn't realize he could go home. And even if he just served as a servant to his father, because he didn't have an inheritance anymore, he would still be better off than living with the pigs. So he left. He went home. And his father was so glad because his son was dead and now he's alive. But the son who was there and was faithful and had not squandered in his inheritance and wasted it all and ended up destroying his life. He says, I've been with you the whole time and here you're slaughtering and, and making this party for your son who was unfaithful, who squandered his inheritance, who ran off, left us alone, left me alone to work, and you're celebrating. And so his father corrected him. I guess it's just too hot. So we'll just go like this, okay? This is just how it has to be. And so his father corrected him and pointed out that he loves him. But understand what happened. When the son returned, did he not work? Did he not serve his father? In fact, he said, if I come back and at least be my father's servant, meaning serving his father and working for his father, but his father welcomed him back as his son again. But he still had to become righteous because he was wicked. The point that Jesus made with this is in the context of Malachi chapter 3, 17 and 18. Because the Jews would have known that. And when they heard this, they would have thought of this. And they shall be mine, saith the Lord Almighty, in the day which I appoint for a peculiar possession, and I will make choice of them, as a man makes choice of his son that serves him. So his son who had died, had died because he quit serving his father. And he was alive now because he came back to serve his father. As a man makes choice of his son that serves him. Then shall ye return, the prodigal son, then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. You'll be able then to clearly see because the son couldn't see between righteous and wicked. And that's why he took the inheritance and he ran. But when he returned, he, his senses had come about him and he was able to discern between the righteous and the wicked. Then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked. The righteous is the one who serves his father. The wicked is the one who does not serve his father. And between him that serves God and him that serves him not. Right there. It equates the righteous with the one who serves his father, who serves God, and the wicked with the one who serves him not. And so when you have Christians coming along and trying to pretend that they can be righteous without serving God, they're liars. They don't know the testimony of God. They don't know the prodigal son. 
They don't understand it. They have no clue what they're talking about. The son was dead because he had become wicked and he ran off and lived in wickedness. When he returned to serve his father, because he wasn't serving his father, right? When he returned to serve his father, he became alive again because he was righteous again and serving his father. It all goes together. You cannot separate those out. You cannot be righteous and not serve God. You can't. If you are going to be righteous, you must serve God. If you're going to be wicked, you're not going to serve God. If you're not going to serve God, you are wicked. You are wicked. No matter how much you do as a Christian about being a Christian, if you're not serving God, you're wicked. Take this to heart, put it in your mind, and live by it. And may the Lord bless you as you seek Him with all your heart.